Whoa, that's a lot of purslane. <laughs> I dug up a lot of purslane in my garden, in the, the community garden that is. And I thought, what the heck am I going to do with all this? It has, actually purslane is a, a superfood and it has so many nutritional values. And I tell you, if you have it, you're very fortunate. Eat it. <laughs> you can mix it up with some eggs, you can scramble it in with some, well, I'd saute it and then add the eggs. But today I'm going to make some purslane um, tortas. So, um, yeah, the highlight is going to be the purslane and we're going to do this together and it's going to, and I think it's going to be yummy. Now that I have my camera set up, um, uh, as you, I, I've already showed you what this purslane looks like. I have washed it thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly washed it. I washed it like several times and then I let it soak overnight and so all the, the, uh, the dirt or whatever residues can drop and then I washed it again. I thoroughly washed it again. This is, to me, is almost like a succulent plant. And um, I have another um, video out there with purslane. And it kind of tastes like a cactus to me. But that's my palate. And now if they say it's like a, it's like a spinach, but it's, it's very delicious. It's, if you cook it, you know, right, it, it'll be very yummy. And being that it's a superfood, you can actually put it in smoothies. Um, it's really good for you. And um, so, I have a couple of corns that are being grilled right now. And, um, and while that's being um, grilled, I'm heating up um, some of my beans. And... So I have a mixture of black beans and white rice. And you could use the, um, it, it's jasmine rice. I had, it's a leftover, so I'm going to uh, kind of incorporate it with my tortitas. So um, let's get started. I have my grill that's heating up. And um, I'm going to wash my hands. And the one thing, I, I know I mentioned um, umami. Umami. <laughs> which is a flavor and it's like a bouillon it's like the 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 fifth flavor which is used in a lot of culinary cuisines and um and it's a bouillon and and i found a good deal on this vegetarian gluten-free uh chicken flavored bouillon and i'll read you the ingredients and it's compacted i don't know how they do it but they compact it into this little cute flavor and and I like to get it with no MSG and as organic as possible. This has a mixture of vegetables, spice blend, broccoli, onion, garlic, carrot, beet, spinach, tomato, parsley, turmeric, clove, bay, celery, sea salt, maldestrin from um, uh, not from from non-GMO, uh, and then um, molasses. Uh, Torula yeast, cold press, some safola oil, which means it's not processed with uh, chemicals. So while that's heating up, and my corn is being grilled because I want to make like some kind of relish, like a like a corn cucumber corn relish to go on top. And this is again, this is a, like a vegetarian. And uh, what I did was I roasted a um, Anaheim pepper. And what I want to do is put an Anaheim flavor in there. So I roasted it, and now I sweat it, and now it's able, I'm able to take the peelings off of it. Okay. Just rinse that out underneath cold water. Or you can have some cold water. <clears throat> Ooh, that's kind of spicy. <clears throat> Good thing I have some tea. Ooh, oh, that's a spicy pepper. Yeah, usually in the summer these Anaheims get a little spicy. So be careful. So I'm only going to use one. And then I'm going to... Cut it up. So 
So I want to put some Anaheim flavor into my um, my tortilla. So I take my little toy out, call it a toy because that's what it looks like. Kind of giving up the big, the big, um, the big toys. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in there. <clears throat> Woo! <coughs> and I'll, you can actually mince it up and put it in the relish, but I want my tortilla to have a flavor. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of this um, this chicken flavor, low sodium broth. Now this can be a vegan or it can be a vegetarian. If you're not, I would say you can improvise with the vegetarian. Okay. Set it aside. Now I'm going to put my dry ingredients in there first in my tortillas. So I have a little bit of salt. I'm going to put a little bit of um, uh, sodium bicarbonate, which is um, baking soda. I like my um, tortas to be a little bit fluffy. And then I have a mixture of cumin, pepper, black pepper, and a little bit of celery. Oops. <laughs> A little bit of the just a pinch of the celery seed which is ground everything is ground and you could put whatever um, flavors you want and because I was thinking you know that's a, 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 a succulent to me it's a succulent plant it could be a succulent plant it just looks like a succulent plant cross between so I, I, I it reminds me of the ocean so I'm going to put a little bit of sea kelp in there just to kind of give it a little oceany flavor. And that way your 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 corn tortillas have like a nice little flavor to them. Why not? <laughs> you want to put some cilantro if you want to mix up some cilantro in there. Or cook some of your purslane and put it in your tortilla, that'd be great as well. So, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this chicken broth in there. Okay. And then just kind of mix it up. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. And these little tortitas. And I would put just a little bit of oil. Because I just, I'm looking for a doughy, like a play-doh texture. I'd say that's about a good tablespoon of oil. If you want to put lard in it, you can. If you want to put butter, melted butter, you can. up the whole and I probably put like oh maybe about <laughs> it looks like six cups to me the nice thing about this corn you can if, if you can also add some some corn flour and so what I want to do I'm gonna probably need a little bit more corn corn flour in there I have my um, umami and um, I have like two cubes in there and you can go ahead and try this I'm gonna put like because I want my tortilla my, tor my tortita to be very to be very flavorful so I'm gonna improvise and put some buckwheat in there just to thicken it up a little bit yeah and plus, I like that color of buckwheat. It's kind of 
kind of gives it a little bit of a purple color. Oops. If you have blue corn, oh, that's even better. I think I made one with blue corn. Actually, it's the same kind of texture as the, but only finer. And it'll bring it together. Go ahead and try it. Mm. Yum. And you might want to watch your salt intake on this, especially those hot days. Okay. So I might want to put a little bit more oil in there because the whole purpose of having um, the oil is you want it to get a little crispy. So that's probably about another tablespoon of oil. desert somewhere but I'm not 
I'm in Northern California and you would think <laughs> that the, the weather would be nice, but right now we have a heat wave and um, it's very dangerous. It's a national warning. So anytime you have a heat wave, find a cool, cool spot, please, by all means. Unless, of course, you like the heat and you can handle the heat. Okay, you let that. And it's so simple. These are so easy to make. And, they, and the nice thing is that they don't stick. I'm going to raise that up a little bit. How do you know when they're done? When they're very firm. Oh. <laughs> when they're very firm, you know when it's done. And so I just kind of, that's a little soft still. And you touch it with your finger. It should, it should, um, it shouldn't be soft. It shouldn't sink down. It should be very, very springy. I'm going to get started on my first lane. I'm going to give you a little secret in sanitation. You can put just a little bit of bleach in a tub of water and then wipe down your surface that way. When I used to have a child care, we would sanitize the toys because the children would put them in their mouths. But with a little tiny bit of bleach, I think it's like one tablespoon to a gallon that's enough to um, be able to wipe. Um, it lasts 24 hours, and um, and you can um, and it'll be it'll be safe to use. 